Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to see so many people here this morning, and I'm so glad to be standing here with our community leaders, our metro leaders, um, to talk about the most recent, um, one of the most recent efforts from my team and my office um, and to talk about the incredible partnership we have here with Houston Metro and with leaders across Texas's 7th Congressional District. Um, I am so proud to announce today uh, that we're standing here because Houston Metro will receive a five million dollar grant um, that's part of a bill that President Biden signed into law, the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023 in December, a government funding bill to fund essential programs for our community, including the funding for the Westheimer Boost Project, which I will let my friends at Metro talk about in more detail. But I was thrilled to partner with Houston Metro as well as community organizations to support this important work of making sure that transit and transportation across our community are accessible, affordable, efficient, and that we keep Houstonians moving. So this project will be used, this funding, the $5 million will be used to improve the 82 Westheimer line, which runs right through the heart of Texas's 7th Congressional District. It's an east-west crosstown bus that almost everybody knows it has the highest ridership in all of Metro. And as I understand, it has the highest ridership in the entire state of Texas. So uh, I will again let our friends at Metro talk in more detail, but I'm so thrilled about the improvements that we've been discussing over the years to the shelters. Uh, very important, especially in our Houston heat, making sure that they're accessible, building on the incredible work Metro has already been doing uh, to ensure that bus stops are accessible across our community, um, and making sure that they're easier boarding platforms and safe all access doors. Um, it's really a much needed improvement that we've seen as we stand here um, in front of a shelter uh, right here on Westheimer, right here on the 82 Westheimer line. And I just want to point out um, how important this is. We've been working on these projects for a couple of years, and we were able to do this this year because of the community funded project program that we have instituted uh, in the United States Congress to allow members of Congress to identify projects in their districts that are worthy of support. And here, what we've been able to do is work with an incredible partnership across our community. You're going to hear from our community leaders as well this morning about this, what this will do from Midtown Houston out to the West Chase District, all the way across the 7th Congressional District. And so I just want to um, acknowledge that this is the result of a true partnership at every level of government, from our leaders at Metro, from our leaders at local organization, the TERS, um, from leaders in the city, the county, and of course, at the federal level. And that's what Houston is all about. It's why I'm so proud to have the honor and privilege of representing Texas's 7th Congressional District in Washington, and to have the opportunity to to work with the people who are assembled here right now. So I want to just acknowledge um, briefly that one of the most incredible partners I've had, you will hear from next, who will then uh, turn the program over, but I've had the privilege of working um, with Metro Chairman Sanjay Ram since before he became the chairman, uh, as well as many other wonderful Metro board members who've worked together to improve our community. And I couldn't be more proud than to introduce him to you all and, and have him share his vision and talk about the incredible improvements that this $5 million in boost funding will bring to the uh, 82 Westheimer line and to people across Houston and Harris County. Thanks so much. Sanjay. Thank you, Congresswoman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here. I think the weather is going to cooperate. Uh, for a little while, we might be the windy city and get the clouds out of here. Right. So uh, thank you all for joining us. This is a remarkable day for us made possible by Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher. Uh, I'm Sanjay Rambadhan, Chair of the Metro Board of Directors. Before I begin, let me be first to acknowledge uh, my colleagues on the board, uh, Board Secretary and Chairman of the Strategic Planning and Capital Committee, Troy Taylor, and Board Member Diane Luter, Chair of the Land Use and Joint Development Committee at Metro. We'd also like to acknowledge our community partners uh, joining us today. Uh, Jim Murphy with the West Chase uh, Management District, and Joe Webb, the chair of the Montrose Stirs, both of whom we work with on multiple initiatives at Metro. 
A lot of what we are able to do at Metro is possible because of partnerships. Whether it's a partnership with individuals, community organizations, local businesses, elected officials who care about leaving our city, leaving our region even better than they found it. And because of this grant, that is exactly what Congresswoman Fletcher is doing today with the investment along the 82 West Timer Corridor. As she talked about it, the 82 West Timer is a east-west lifeline for the Houston region, carrying over 12,000 passengers pre-pandemic. Um, we often talk about the rich diversity of the Houston region. Um, this is a line that I use often. If you want to experience and travel the world, all you need to do is ride the 82 West Timer from the downtown transit center through right here, through Greenway, through the Galleria, through West Chase, out to West Oaks. You will experience the cuisines, the languages of the entire planet right on the 82 West Timer, and that is how important that line is to our region. Uh, we often talk about this 12,000 riders, the largest ridership of any uh, bus route in the state of Texas. Metro, by the way, has a fleet of about 1,500 buses, sixth largest fleet anywhere in the country, largest bus fleet in the state of Texas, larger by twice the nearest next bus fleet anywhere in Texas. Um, West Chase and the Montrose Management District have uh, reimagined their neighborhoods to be more people-centric, people-centered communities. But we're not finished. Thanks to the advocacy of Congressman Fletcher with this $5 million grant, we will construct the 82 West Timer Boost Corridor, which is one of 17 boost corridors as part of the $7.5 billion Metro Next plan. The signature bus service will provide faster transit connections, improve the travel time between downtown Greenway, uptown West Chase, and the West Oaks, connecting com commuters to 64 of our other bus routes, connecting to the Silver Line BRT, and via the downtown transit center, connecting us to the Red Line, Light Rail Line as well. All of this is possible for us on the board to talk about and set the vision and the policy, but really, the leadership for the 4,100 plus strong Metro family comes from the president and CEO, Tom Lambert, and I'll pass the mic on to him. Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to echo the chairman's gratitude to Congresswoman Fletcher as well as the Biden administration and all of our community partners. The advancement of this project would not be possible without them. As you know, in 2019, Houston area voters made it clear that investments in our transit system was a priority. Nearly 70% voted for the Metro Next Moving Forward plan. The 82 West Timer Boost Project is part of our promise to fulfill that plan. For those who may not know, as you've heard earlier, the Metro uh, 82 West Timer route is our busiest, providing service every six minutes. It is the highest ridership bus route in the Metro system, and as the Congresswoman and the Chairman also noted, it's the largest bus route in the state of Texas. Boost improvements for the Sincorda will improve traffic signal improvements, bus stop enhancements, new bus shelters, improved passenger information, easier boarding platforms, and a safe all-door access for Metro passengers. It will give everyone a safe and convenient transportation option that provides a better walk, a better stop, and a better ride. We applaud Congresswoman Fletcher for looking ahead and recognizing that in the 21st century, infrastructure investments should be made in sustainable and diverse modes of transportation to provide freedom of movement for anyone that needs to move within our community. This is an investment in our region's transportation future, a more sustainable, accessible, and equitable one that allows everyone, whether they can drive or not, to safely get where they need to go. Uh, before I introduce uh, Mr. Murphy to make some comments, I want to thank the Metro staff and I want to thank all of our private partners. This does not happen without a staff that's passionate about public service. It does not happen without partners that make sure we deliver on what we commit back to this community. So I want to thank the staff. I want to thank our partners as we move forward. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Jim Murphy of the West Chase Management District. Jim. Thank you, Tom, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. 
and uh, this is a great day for Houston. It's a great day for West Houston, particularly. As uh, some of you know, uh, this project was talked about in the 2003 referendum. We supported it then. We supported it in 2019, Mr. Chairman, and uh, we are delighted to see Congresswoman. Thank you for your help. Uh, this thing come to fruition today. Uh, yes, this is the number one bus route in Texas. It's kind of be you know, good to be in company with the Houston Cougars. They're number one as well. So we think that's a good association to have uh, as we launch this thing today. Uh, but I want you to tell you what we've done in the West Chase District because we really care about our community. And when we went to re-envision, as the chairman said, what we're going to do for Westheimer, it was about the pedestrian realm, particularly on Westheimer, that we're finishing up. And if you're welcome to come out and tour it, we'd love to show you around. Uh, about a $20 million project to make Westheimer work better for the people in our district. That means linking the hike and bike trails to it. It means putting in custom bus shelters that have lighting for those gloomy mornings or those early nights where you're still riding the bus. It's pedestrian lighting so you can get around safely. It's new and widened sidewalks so you can get from point A to point B, which wasn't always possible, Doug. You know that from, from coming out there before. Uh, and these improvements all make it better, as, as the chairman said, a, a better stop, a better transportation uh, connection, if you will, and a better experience. Uh, but Metro's done a little bit more, and I want to call attention to their far side, not, not the comic strip, but the far side of the, uh, <laughs> of the bus stops. Metro has taken the philosophy of we're going to benefit the bus riders, but we're also going to do things to benefit the people in the cars that are not riding the bus. But when you move this bus stop to the other side of the sign, it makes all those right turns happen more easily. So Metro's thinking globally uh, in this, and I, I really appreciate that because we're always going to be an auto-dominated city. But transit has a key role to play, and making it work better is one of the things we've done. It's a little minor point, and you wouldn't notice if I didn't tell you, but when we built the curbs for the new Westheimer sidewalks, we built them to nine inches. So what? Well, the difference is, and the Metro people all know this, the bus doesn't have to kneel when it comes to the stop. Well, that only saves you 30 seconds. Mm-hmm times 10 stops, that's five minutes. And you know, if you're like me, getting to the office five minutes earlier kind of makes a difference. <laughs> Maybe you'd even be on time. And so those little things make it where transportation's competing with cars. It has to compete with cars. And these little things to make it a better experience, to make it faster, to make it easier on the motoring public are all the kinds of improvements that are possible. We have literally paved the way, Mr. Chairman, for you guys out there in West Chase. And uh, we, we look forward to this improvements up and down the corridor. And, and before I get off this mic, I want to take a personal privilege to say what a pleasure it's been to work with Congresswoman Fletcher. Uh, Houston owes her so much gratitude, whether it's the things she's done for the Port of Houston, whether it's the Coastal Spine, or uh, today in this project today. She has been a great champion for Houston, and it's a pleasure to have her as my representative, actually. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Congresswoman Fletcher and Chairman Ron, for, for inviting us here today. Uh, I'm Joe Webb. I chair the Montrose Redevelopment Authority and the TERS 27. And this is, ah, thank you, I forget that. Uh, West Hammer runs through the middle of our TERS. It not only does that, but it is kind of our main street for the neighborhood when you get right down to it. Montrose may be the boulevard. Westheimer is our main street, so that the improvements that are going to happen are going to make this community function even better and give us even greater access. Obviously, it's going to connect the four major areas of the city, the Med Center, West Chase, downtown, uh, all of those good places. It'll give more people more diverse abilities to connect into schools, shopping, all kinds of healthcare facilities, libraries, community centers, and parks. The accessibility improvements to this project will create safer crossings. It will also put in new ramps for wheelchairs, and it will also, as Jim was talking about, make it easier to get on and off of a bus because of the, the changes that are being made. The new shelter improvements, you will, you will see it will make a big difference in Westheimer for us. It will make this a much more comfortable corridor to shop, walk, and tr be a rider on. And we at the TERS are excited to celebrate with the Congresswoman, with Metro, this crucial project. We thank Metro for its work in improving our experience for our riders and the riders of the rest of the city. And again, we thank the Congresswoman for her commitment to our neighborhood. Thank you. 
Well, thank you so much, Joe and Jim and Tom and Sanjay, um, all these great friends and partners, and of course, the terrific Metro board members who are here with us. I think Sanjay and I can take some questions if anyone has any questions. Sure. Um, so this funding is coming out of the uh, Consolidated Appropriations Act that we passed in December of last year. And this is what's um, in the Community Funded Projects Program that goes through the House Appropriations Program. Um, I submitted several projects. You'll hear more about some others as well. Um, but submitted several projects for considerations by the House Appropriations Committee. And um, I'm very grateful that every project I requested received the, the funding that we requested, uh, including this hugely important project for our district um, and so this will come out of the annual appropriations from the Congress it's a program that we've had for the last two years after a little bit of a hiatus and this is to address some of the issues in the past with some of these con congressionally directed spending but you know what we believe and I think this this bears out is that it's important for representatives who know our communities best who know the needs and who are partners with people across the community uh, to have some input and some say in how these federal transit dollars and other uh, other funds get allocated and so uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you about all of the other community funded projects that uh, I was able to secure uh, in the consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023. The, the project's already under design, going through permitting process. We believe sometime in the summer of 2023 we will have a groundbreaking ceremony to celebrate the dollars actually being put to use on the ground where the rubber meets the road. Total cost of the boost project in the West Timer is probably upwards of $30 million. We are still working on the finer uh, touches to the engineering design, so there will be an updated construction cost to share in the next coming months. Do you know exactly what this $5 million will go to? It'll go to improving bus stops near side, actually moving them to far side. The universal accessibility improvements along the corridor will go towards digital signage at the bus shelter showing next bus arrival. So uh, exactly which uh, side of the bus shelter is going to go to? Now, I can't get to that level of detail, but it's going to go into the overall uh, corridor improvements. Are there other partners that within this that the management, the management district's funding certain sections within their areas? I know Mr. Murphy has done a lot of work along West Island and West Other grants. So there are two, two pronged answer to this. We're always looking for partnerships. The Boost <laughs> Corridor started off as a metro project. Uh, as you're aware, Doug, on the 54 and 56, which are already under construction, we have partnerships with Harris County. On the 82, thanks to the Congresswoman, we've got the first grant. She's going to talk about other opportunities that there might be. We're always looking to see how we partner with Terzis management districts along the corridor. Uh, Jim Murphy talked about the uh, signature shelters in West Chase. The way we partner with them is we provide, Metro provides the base cost of the shelter and the management district provides the delta, the increment to put in uh, treatments that are unique, that are characteristic of the communities that they're being installed in. So we are always looking for more partnerships because that then allows us to accelerate and deliver on the promises of Metronex even quicker when we find partnership, financial or in kind. Uh, and I can just touch on briefly um, another opportunity. I think one of the things, of course, that's one of the things I think that characterizes this community in this district are these great partnerships. Um, and certainly I have enjoyed the opportunity to partner with Metro on a number of different applications and projects. And one of the things that I'm working on now um, is making sure that all of the different funding that we've authorized in the last Congress makes its way to deserving projects. And so under the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, there are other opportunities for infrastructure grants and I know that we are working on one uh, with Metro right now we're working on one uh, with the Montrose TERS other um, other opportunities for grant funds and it's really important to 
think about how much the Congress and the Biden administration have focused on infrastructure investment as a way to rebuild our communities, to emerge from the pandemic, and to invest in our communities. And so one of the things I'm really excited to be doing this Congress is serving on the new Regional Leadership Council of 12 members of the House Democratic Caucus who will work closely with the administration to make sure uh, that the funds that we have envisioned and authorized, as well as um, the programs that we've envisioned in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Chips and Science Act, uh, several bills that fund these investments uh, are making their way to our communities. And so I'm going to be the regional representative for Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona to make sure that we are seeing those programs implemented here. Um, but there are hundreds of grants available to agencies and communities through those bills. And we'll be working with all of our stakeholders to make sure they're aware of um, the different funding opportunities, different grant programs, and making sure that those dollars and those programs make their way to our communities. And so that's something I'm excited to work on, and I think there'll be more opportunities to continue this great work together uh, in this Congress uh, and going forward. Sure. Um, as it stands today, Metro has the next bus texting. So if you know your bus stop number and you text it, you will get real-time information on the next series of buses arriving there. But along the boost corridors, we want it to look and feel to some extent like what a BRT corridor or a rail corridor might look like, where you got digital signage at each bus stop, at each bus shelter, that shows when the next bus is arriving uh, along the direction that you are going in. If you want it for both directions, you can use the next bus texting service. That's what it looked like. Mr. Murphy reminded me, you know, uh, everybody loves the term leverage. <laughs> so this is about us leveraging existing investments by not just Metro, but by others as well, and future investments that others might make. While leveraging might sound cliche, we actually put it into practice here and look to see if we can use this as a force multiplier to build on investments that everybody's making because Again, cliche, together we can do more than we can do by ourselves.